What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, this is TWA Motorsports of course, and today we are on the Green Sierra. So, um, look guys, I've, I've been putting this off for a while, and so I've got to the point where I just, I wanna get little things out of the way. So I've got, you know, a bunch of little things, little odds and ends things that I wanna tie up on, on several different projects before we get, well, I don't know if it's before. But, you know, we want to get to the 55, we want to get to the Trans Am, I want to clear out that corner, that's all Trans Am stuff, we got a lot of stuff coming for the 55. Uh, but anyway, today, we're going to focus on the Green Sierra. There are two things that are really bugging me, majority of them are on the inside, we're going to have to do some work on the outside as well, but in the last video on this truck, guys, you did see that I put it in the ditch, it happens, crap. Anyway, we were able to repaint the lower valance, it looks really good, I still haven't washed this thing, I really need to do that. But today, I'm gonna to talk about the two things that I want to address, and that is um, the interior mirror and these door switches. So look, these switches, oh, I hate the way they fit. You see that? I, I just don't like it. And so what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I'm going to take this panel off. I'm gonna see if we can, we're gonna unplug it like the newer style. Because the newer style, you can't just pull the switches out and unplug them. You actually have to take the panel out of the way and then unplug them. So I'm going to set this up in a similar fashion because I want these to fit nice. And if I have to zip tie them or screw them or whatever, uh, I'm not going to glue them, I don't think. We'll just have to see once we get it off what we can do to pull that snug. Both sides. So that's one thing I want to accomplish. But I think where we're going to start is on the mirror. So originally when I did the power window swap and the dash swap and all of that, um, I put a power mirror in. So I put the center console up top, as you guys can see. And somebody asked me, by the way, um, how to wire the lights to where they come on with the dome light. I don't really know why mine aren't. I noticed in my black truck they do. So that's interesting because this harness is all one part so the this guy up here i mean i guess a guy could tie it into here i don't know that's odd that they don't come on like my other truck but anyway so uh when we added this we added this power mirror and the mirror has the direction and if you notice it says oc down the down the bottom that stands for open circuit because we do not have the actual temp sensor on the outside of the vehicle. And so that's something that I want to address. When I originally ran all the wires on the inside of the truck, I ran the stereo wire. So I ran an amplifier wire and uh, I ran light uh, fog light harness wires because mine is manually done. It's not a factory switch. And I ran three additional wires. So two of them are for the temp sensor. So I already ran wires basically from down underneath in this little box down here through that rubber grommet out to the outside. And I've just got them tied up underneath things down here and out there. And so today we're going to use those wires to hopefully wire in our switch or our temp sensor on the outside of the truck. So I don't know that I'm gonna be able to put it in the stock location. And when I say that, the reason why is because I do have a ginormous transmission cooler up front. Now that transmission cooler required me to take out a part that I believe that temp sensor normally mounts to. So today we're gonna just see if we can get it going. It sh I'm hoping it's relatively easy because it's just a two wire hookup, but I wanna plug it into the factory box. That may, that may be challenging. And I also want to obviously get it hooked up out here. So the first thing I'm going to do is off camera, I'm going to unclip just get my clip removing tools and I'm gonna unclip these guys and get this out of the way so we can get to the grill because the grill is gonna definitely have to come out. Now I know you guys have seen me use these a hundred times. They're very handy for taking these style clips out. Um, you can also use like a flathead screwdriver. You, like sometimes if they're not like super old, these are all new because I replaced them because I'm picky like that. Um, you can pop them open like I'm doing with just the ledge. So you could use a flat blade screwdriver. But once we get these out, we'll be able to lift this panel off and uh, get this out of place. Move on to the grill. Oh my gosh, everything's going everywhere. Once we get this off, 
there is a 10 millimeter that holds the grill in. And then I believe this older style has, yeah, it does. You can put a Phillips screwdriver in here and turn this in order to release the rest of the grill. In order to get the grill out, got a 10 millimeter. And then as I said, the, um, this guy right here turns and that's loose. The only other clips we have will be in the corners by the tail lights. There's also two of these down below. I like to use a really long screwdriver so we get it all loose. You guys probably can't even see here, but right in the corner here. Now some of the newer style um, just has clips. So on the corner, We'll pull loose on both sides. Now this is a brand new grill, so it should be in good shape, but if you guys have an older grill, be careful, because they're pretty brittle as they get older. Make sure your clip comes off with it, and ours did. So now, well, I don't know. I think we're still gonna have to find a different place to mount it. We'll just have to check it out. So normally, what you have here is your temp sensor sets, there's, a, there's normally a ridge that goes across here, and your temp sensor sets on the back side of that ridge. Well, obviously because of this pretty big cooler, we don't have that option. So we've got to figure out a place to mount it to where it's not getting, you don't, you kind of want it in front of the radiator, you know, because like I said, it normally mounts like right in this area. So what I'm thinking is there's an actual hole right down here where we, I think we could mount it. So right here is a hole. And so what I'm thinking is that is where I'm going to choose to mount it. Um, maybe. No, that isn't gonna work either. Nope. I may have to put it, no, well, that isn't gonna work either. We're gonna have to experiment. I could put it in this piece of plastic, I suppose, and mount it there. So this is the piece of plastic that mounts the actual sensor. So this is the sensor. The sensor snaps into this guy. Let's see if I can get it to snap in here. Like that. And then that's how you get your reading. So this is the sensor and this is where we're gonna tie into wires. You can see there's only two wires. Uh, but I'm gonna, let me experiment here back and forth and see if I can find a place where I feel like it's gonna be out you know, we don't want it up against something that's going to get hot, but GM puts it right in front. You know, there's not a lot of room in between it uh, and the actual radiator itself, but, or the air, actually that's the AC condenser, but it actually, it faces forward. So I don't think it's really going to matter as long as we just not up against something, you know, like physically up against something. Take a look at where I found. You can see these uh, little push-in clips that come in from the back side here. I was able to push it over that, and I think, guys, this is going to work. It's very, I'm, well, I say it's very sturdy. It's sturdy on the bottom side. I'm gonna put a small self-tapping screw in the top piece of this plastic, just like a little one, and that's gonna be good. It's gonna have ample air. Uh, it'll be about the same distance out that the factory one, or the factory location was. And uh, aside from that, I may go through the instructions. I don't remember if the instructions on here talked about where to mount this. I may look at those real quick just to make sure they didn't put like, I mean, I guess a guy could use one of their tabs like on, on this right here. I guess I could mount it to that. I don't know, let me, let me check their instructions out real quick. But if not, I think this is, will be a good home for it. Take a look, got a little screw, not deep enough where it's gonna get into the radiator, just a little self-tapping screw. And then it's threaded on the bottom side there. So you are gonna need this plastic piece. Guys, I got this from the salvage yard. Um, this generally comes with a mirror. If you order the mirror off like eBay or something, that's what I did. It came with the sensor, but the actual bracket I had to get from the, um, like a local parts yard or wrecking yard. So with that being said, I need to find the wires that I ran through and I won't make you guys watch me dig around for that. And then we need to extend those wires out and we're trying to make it look somewhat nice by going, 
you know, underneath the battery tray or something and trying to find a nice area to tie in here to get um, the wires up to the front. We've already got the hard part done, which was going through the grommet. Now we just need to get them up here. Got my plug, kind of got it loomed up at least down to where the wires start. And then I found my two wires here. And so what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to go underneath all this stuff, you know, just try to make it look kind of nice. It's not, you know, it, if a person were looking that knew what they were looking for, they would know it was out of place, but I'd like to go under the battery box and then kind of between the, the computer here. And then we're gonna sneak it right around. It should come right up through there like all the other lines. So I don't think we'll have a problem there. Uh, I just gotta get enough loom on there. I don't wanna be trying to loom it up while, <laughs> while I'm trying to run it through. So for the outside, we're finished. You can see the harness going in. I went back behind the power steering lines underneath the computer. Okay, you can see it down there. It's the one on the closest to me. And then we went down the inner fender like we've got before. And then we just hooked into the wires that like I said, we already went through the grommet with. So now that's that part. Let's get into the inside and see what we need to hook up. I have a diagram of what wires go where um i just don't know how we're going to get them into the box we'll just have to see um where the box ties into this whole operation now on to inside the truck now this is a little bit different guys if you're going from scratch and you didn't do the whole swap like i did this is where the main wiring part's going to come in because you have two wires that come in through the truck but then you have this guy so this is only for the 99 to 02 Okay, so you can see we have a whole mess of wires here. So depending on what you're hooking up, all right? So I'm looking at the clip being on the top side. That's the way it plugs in, just like this. So with the clip on the top, your very first wire here, and my light's going out on the inside. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, let's go out here. So looking at it, the clip from the same side, if you're not like hooked up the way I am. So we didn't, you didn't do the swap for the dash and whatnot. The very first line that you see is positive. So you're gonna have to get power somewhere. The next one is the ground. So you're gonna have to get a ground somewhere. The next three that you see in the middle are not used at all. And then the latter two, you can see you have a green and a gray with a white stripe. It's almost black, but it's gray with a white stripe. So that, is what we need to hook up just those two wires if you already have power to your mirror if you don't then you have to hook up four wires now look guys if you don't have this hooked up like what i do you're gonna have to run wire from the mirror all the way down to open you know to go underneath the dash to the box underneath the dash which we're going to look at in just a second but i wanted to kind of give you guys an idea what the wiring look like and this is only for the 99 to 02 all right, so the O3 and up are different. Now we're under the dash and you guys are probably like wondering, why does he keep saying this box, the box, the box? Well, the box is this guy right here, guys. So this wiring right here, these two lower plugs are what goes up to the mirror and your third brake light and everything is basically controlled by that. And look, mine's not even set in there. I didn't, I've yet to put the black, black plastic cover on here, which is another thing I want off my shelf over there. So I'm gonna unplug both of these and we're gonna see if we have pins on the back side. So here's what's going on down here. I was just testing with my meter, this bigger box that plugs in on the bottom. And look guys, if you're not, if you don't have this whole setup, it's not gonna be the same. You're just gonna have to grab power wherever and it won't really matter. But for my purposes, this little one right here is the plug for the temp sensor. So it actually plugged in right here and there are two prongs in there. And if you look, the wiring color is the same on the back side of it. So what I'm going to do is off camera, I'm gonna take the seven millimeter out of the back here and I'm gonna hook to the corresponding green and gray wire that this guy goes to. Now, if you do not have this setup, which I think a majority of you guys, if you're putting in this mirror, probably won't. All you need to do is you need to tie those end wires. Remember I said power, ground, and then the end wires are the two that control the circuit for this. Um, that's the only four wires that have to be hooked up. So you would just need to find power and ground down here and then hook to your two wires coming in from under the hood. So. 
in my scenario, it's a little bit harder because I want to make, you know, I kind of want to hook it up like this, like it looks factory. But if you don't have this whole harness, you're not going to be able to do that. I've got the wires in the back of it now. Before I put anything back together, we're going to give it a test. I did unhook the battery, guys. I didn't talk about that, but you definitely need to unhook the battery anytime you're messing with electronics. I got the battery hooked up. Guys, I'm really hoping this works. It was a tight fit in there, I'll tell you that. Awesome. Awesome. It's working. I don't know if you guys can see it. Um, it's really dim, it seems like. But maybe that's normal. It seemed like it was brighter than that. Oh, it's because my headlights are on. Um, let's see if we can... I was going to override my headlights, but that isn't working. I think it'll be the right, the right thing in the daytime, but it's working now. Perfect. Okay. So now what's cool about this is I can go ahead and put my box back, the cover of the box back on there, which is just, it just snaps on. And then there's a little plastic kind of thumb screw that goes on there. That is exciting guys. I've had this setting on the shelf, um, that sensor for quite a while. So now that we know it's working, I could go ahead, button up the front of this, put the grill back on, the uh, little clips and little plastic retainer piece. Yeah, exciting. All right, so let me get all this cleaned up and then we are going to move on to see what we can do about addressing this issue. Got the front end put back together. Everything looking good, just the reverse process. Now, one more time before I go on to the door panels, I did wanna show you guys this. This clip, okay, on the 99-02, to it's flat. This comes in at the top, so this is the top of the truck. The roof of the truck is where the actual clip is, all right? So when we're looking at it down like that, very first wire is power, next one is ground. Chances are that's how you're gonna be hooking it up, so you're gonna have to get power and ground to it. I didn't have to do that in this video. And then the two temp sensors are the green and the gray, okay? So I don't know if they're polarity specific, um, if you get the actual stock harness, then it should be green and gray or green with a white stripe, gray with a white stripe. But if not, and, and it doesn't read for some reason, you may have to swap those. But I just wanted to show you this one more time before we moved on to the door panels. Now that we're got it all back together, let's uh, grab some stuff and see if we can get this door panel off. Here's what we're gonna attempt to do. We're gonna take it off as if we are already connected the way I want to connect it, let's say. Uh, and like I said, guys, the newer ones, you can't just pull these out. And so I think that's probably why GM went to that style is because people were breaking them left and right. So we'll get this stuff out of here. These take a... It's so much different than the, the older or the newer ones. I mean, the door panel's pretty much the same shape, but it just, I don't know, these, the new ones fit way nicer. If I had this all to do over, so like if I were gonna build this truck again, if I ever sell it and decide to build another one, I'm going to build one with this front end. I would I would have done this um, this front end on the newer style truck. So I could get the interior color that I wanted instead of this bluish color. And um, I, I just think it looks a lot nicer. And I would have had the electronic throttle body. I mean, there's just stuff that I would change if I had to do it over. I'm not wanting to come out of here. And I think that's the only one we have. There's generally one here behind this. And this one I'm going to have to fish out some other way. It's not threading out. I'm going to go get another extension so I can get a little further out. I'm not such an angle. The other thing is we could take our light out of the door down here. 
have to take it out now, but I like to get it out of the way. Put the slide down in here. But let me go get an extension, see if I can get that piece out, and then we'll lift this door panel off. And then, like I said, try to treat it as if we had to do that in order to unhook the switches. Got that thing out of there. It's just at a weird angle, I think. So now we should be able to just lift this thing up, and then we're gonna get on the back side here and unplug our tweeter and our switches. And it is a little bit easier on these older ones because of the way they plug in. Uh, you just gotta pinch them and unplug them as opposed to the newer ones where they actually have like a swing over style switch. Once we have this off and flipped over, the main area of concern is this right here, right? So we need to get that to stay in place. So here's what I think I'm gonna do. I'm not suggesting this to anybody else. I'm gonna drill a small hole in this right here. Small enough where I can get a zip tie in that. And then we're gonna try to go around this or I may even drill a hole in that as well. Um, that's what I think I'm gonna start with. And we're gonna do that and see if that will draw some pressure up against that and keep it in place. I think it may, we'll just have to see. So I'm almost there. Um, let me show you where I drilled here, where the zip tie is. Like I said, I drilled in the corner of that switch, okay? And then I drilled in the corner of this guy because it's pretty sturdy. And then I cinched it down with a zip tie. Now it's not quite where I want it to be, but I don't know guys, I don't, there's no real, <laughs> there's no area to pry against like there is on the newer ones. So the newer ones have a bolt here that you can pry against. I've done this in the past because a lot of people have broken them. And uh, just to get by, I've zip tied them on the back side, and you'll never even know. But I'm going to keep messing around and see if I can find an area where we could maybe cinch it down a little bit differently. I just don't know. I don't see any good spot to pull it. Um, where I need it to go. And even if we end it right there, that's way better than what it was. I don't know, we'll just have to, we may try another spot and see what we come up with. After looking at it a while, guys, this is way better than what we had. It pulled a lot of that slack out. It's not gonna be perfect. I'm wondering though, is as it gets some heat, um, if it'll start to conform a little bit, especially with pressure up against it. I just, I can't find anywhere else that I'm, I'm risking going through the outside ledge here, and I sure don't wanna do that. So we're just gonna keep going with what we've got. I'm just gonna do this to the other side. At this point, I'm gonna hook it back up, and um, hopefully that looks a little better. I got this back on, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison. So look at that. Could it go a little further? Yeah, but I was getting close to where I wanted to, or I felt comfortable, but this angle right here looks way better. It sets nice and flush. So let's go to the other side and look how terrible, I mean terrible, they fit. <laughs> like you could see why this is a real annoyance to me. Look at that. It's like it's not even, it's not even in there. So now I just need to pull this side apart and cinch it down. And I'll be happy with that. Now we've got both sides knocked out, so making it look quite a bit better. Now I just need to wash the thing, but got that one. You guys saw that, but then I went ahead and did the other one off camera. And same situation, same spot is where I drilled it. There's a little triangle piece back towards the back. That's what I did. And guys, it looks so much better. And I filmed this, I started filming this a couple days ago and I actually drove this thing to work. And it's just, it's performing great, knock on wood, I guess. But uh, the other thing I will tell you is that that got a lot brighter. So the mirror, the compass um, got a lot brighter when I was out in the daytime. So, you know, with the whole windshield being tinted, and us being here in the shop, it's kind of dim looking, but it actually is bright, just like it's supposed to be in the daytime and dark. 
at night. And then the other thing, guys, is it works phenomenal. So I guess the placement of the sensor was good. Even though we had to kind of move it around, it's not the factory location, but uh, I've been driving it in the cold weather and it's like um, 30 below, or well, 30 below. It's like 30 degrees and it's saying ice like they normally say. So it is programmed working like it's supposed to. And I'm excited because, uh, you know, the biggest part was I had the sensor over there on my table and I had that black cover for the box down here in the corner in the kick panel. And it was just driving me nuts. And sometimes it's like that, guys. You get the big stuff done, and then the little intricate details, it, it sometimes takes a little bit to get accomplished. But two things checked off the list I've been wanting to do for a while, and uh, ultimately we are finished. So, I, guys, if you're going to add one of these compass mirrors, I think it looks really nice. Uh, even if you don't have the rest of the stuff, that's kind of the process of doing it. And then, of course, you know, if you do the power window swap, I don't know if you guys are dealing with the same issue with trying to pull those in and make them look nice, but... Ultimately, like I said, um, if I had to do this project over as far as this green truck, I would buy an O3 up and I would get all the stuff that I Blake wanted and then I would put that front end on it. But either way, I don't know what's next on this truck, guys. I have some stuff on the list over there on my board, but ultimately, um, I don't know how soon we're gonna get to those things because they're a, you know quite a bit of work and uh, ultimately, I, I haven't been enjoying this truck very much. I haven't drove it much. It's always constantly being worked on, but now it's like drivable. I just wanna keep it clean and drive it for a little bit. But you'll see, I'm sure you'll see something on it. I'll figure out something that I wanna do. I really, after driving it, I hate that radio that's in it, that single DIN. So we may do a double DIN swap at some point. But for now, we're finished in this video. So if you guys did enjoy this, please like always smash that thumbs up button. If you are not subscribed, of course, go down there, hit the subscribe, ring the bell icon that notifies you every time we drop a new video and stay tuned to see what we work on next.